of your pruning. You're pruning by watching your mind, by being in purpose, and with fruits of listening to the Holy Spirit. But the darkness that's coming up, without clearing away the shallow roots that are in the way of us planting more trees and more, right? Planting more fruit so, so we can have more fruit. Those shallow roots have to be seen. They have to be seen. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's the comparing one day to another. It's comparing one thought to another. It's all this fragmentation, all these compartments that you're looking through. I like this. I like this day. And yes, you, yes, there, it's just a little misdirected. Of course joy is attractive. But in the awakening, you must see that the Holy Spirit is loosening you from your defiled mind. Your mind has been defiled by false beliefs. That defilement is not creative. It's, it's not, didn't change reality, but you believe it did. So it's very deep in your mind. So as the Spirit calls you into purpose, you will have stuff that comes up. So you have to be in your purpose, and then in your purpose, as stuff comes up, you're able to look at it very attentively, without distractions, without drama. You're able to look at it very directly. And that's what I'm doing in these three to five minutes, right? Well, yes, and that's what you're doing throughout the day, because you're just allowing. It's like, you can say the rest of the day is allowing. Instead of going in your mind and going, okay, what is what I need to see? What is it that I feel right now? Instead of constantly doing that throughout the day, you can't really be present when you're doing that all the time. You're just lost in your mind. See, the question, or the answer to your question, lies in the purpose. What is this for? Who, who, whose purpose am I in? What, what are my motives? Why am I digging so much? Yes, I do want to awaken, but I don't prepare myself for God. I work with the Holy Spirit. It's, it's like a river. You know, the river flows and it has its force. And what flows in the river flows in the river. You're, you just got to allow the river to give you whatever it gives you. If it's a big chunk, if a big thing comes off the edge, if a tree falls down in the river, then let it be. Just You just see it as that's what it is. Yes, it seemed like today I had a big tree trunk that came out and was washed down and purged and cleared away. Right? Today I had a few stems and a few leaves that wa washed by. That was it. Just don't judge them. See them as all equally illusory. You see that? You see? I see that. You see that? I'm, that. S I'm still making a distinction, I guess, between I see purpose is that three to five minutes, and then when I'm done, I see that I'm out of purpose. Yeah, that's not it. No. Your purpose is always with you. Your purpose is just learning to surrender. Your purpose is forgiveness, Jason. You just forgive. You can't advance beyond your own understanding. I thought forgiveness was mind watching. It 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 is mind watching because it's all your mind, and forgiveness is watching what I call the unwatched mind. The ego is the unwatched. If you truly watch the ego, it dissolves. But the ego can't dissolve when you're judging good and bad, right and wrong, right? When you're making distinctions and making them real in and of themselves, or advancing beyond your own understanding. And so I'm watching, I know this is going to be, sounds repetitive, but <laughs> try again. Forgiveness is mind-watching, and mind-watching is in those three to five minutes. And yet I'm still mind-watching outside of those three to five minutes. Yes. So it's a different kind of mind-watching. Yes, you can say that in the beginning stages of mind training, <laughs> it is not helpful to be constantly looking in your mind in a, pro, in, in a, in a, in, in a way of looking at your thoughts constantly going in your mind because there are Jesus knows that there's there's an enormous amount of stuff that you have buried back there and that he wants you to come into a place of joy and peace and you need to have joy and peace in order to look and if you're constantly digging in there you won't have the joy and the peace and the stability to advance you beyond oh my god and so this joy and the peace will come from just listening to prompts relaxing meeting with people Yes. A movie, whatever. Yes. And then in the moment, as you advance in these lessons, you learn to articulate what is most helpful. So there's, let me share like 
with my with my own learning going in. When I first start going in my mind, I was just so excited that I could look at my mind. I was just so excited. I was just everyone move out of my way. I'm waking up. I'm looking at my mind. But what I realized was, and I was very joyful and peaceful before, and I was learning the curriculum because I wanted to be consistently peaceful and consistently aware. I wanted to know thyself, but I knew that I wasn't. I knew that there was that, what I call the ache of separation. You have that ache, the human condition in there, and it's just a knot. It's like a thorn in your side. I wanted to look at the thorn. So as I, through my excitement, I would go through, I would listen to Jesus, but I found myself more so throughout the day spending more time looking at my mind, and I wasn't really listening to what Jesus was saying. So what I realized was I started to have, just, I started to feel uh, empty. I started to feel serious, and I called forth witnesses to it. Jeffrey, you're so serious, you know, where is your joy, and all these things, right? And yes, there's a time when you go inside that you seem to lose joy, but you have to go insane to be sane. So there are important times that, see, that's, this is why I'm telling you not to judge what's flowing in the river of consciousness. You have to just see it from a healing context of that's just what's breaking off or coming up in awareness right now that needs to be seen. It's a big chunk today, a little chunk, right, tomorrow or however it seems to be. So what I realized was, was that, and, and this is what I did, I got to a place in my mind where I realized I was afraid, I was afraid that I wasn't going to wake up and I wanted to do it fast, but it was all me, I was forcing it, and that's why I wasn't joyful, because I wasn't really making decisions with the Holy Spirit. I wasn't really connected to the art of miracle working, which is meeting myself where I believe I am, like the Buddha after seven or eight years of asceticism with his friends and starving himself, realized that he was more, he was, his mind was more distracted in the past on food and, and other things in the past because he wasn't meeting himself. So a little girl came along with a bowl of milk and he realized, you know what, if I put this little bit of milk in my belly, then I can sit down and my mind is not it's not off on the past, on food. It's, it's, it's filled up a little bit. So thus was the miracle way. He realized that through the middle way approach of meeting myself, he went inward and then realized enlightenment, realized reality, saw reality for what it was. <laughs> through mind training, through advancing, not going beyond, but meeting himself where he believes he is. So what I realized was, was that that was my goal. But I wasn't trusting in the Holy Spirit. And the first attribute of a teacher of God, a miracle worker, is trust. And all else rests on trust. For me, just doing the lessons exactly as described is actually trust. Is learning to trust and giving the rest of the day over. So what I would do was when there was lots of stuff coming up and it was just enormous, if it was enormous and just a lot of stuff, I started quickly saying, okay, Holy Spirit, if this is coming up, then I trust that what needs to be seen will be seen. And then I will be on about my day as you guide me, and I'm sure that you will give it to me in a clear way so I don't have to dig for this, I don't have to search for this. And you know what started to happen? Immediately, I felt resting. I felt restful. Immediately, I felt peaceful. Although there seemed to be pains, and disorientation in the mind, even though there seemed to be fear and things, I, I didn't understand what was happening because trust is you trusting, it seems like you're going into the unknown, right? So you're trusting to go in because you just don't know. Uh, but really the truth is you're remembering the known. Reality is already known, you already know it. To remember it, you must know it. So what I realized was that I started feeling happy and then when this, when these seeming bad emotions or thoughts that I was trying to get rid of, right? Because that was the thing. I was trying to get rid of them so I could feel holy. Yeah. I was only perpetuating it by doing that. I wasn't trusting that the Holy Spirit would give it to me in a more, more obvious, clear way, and I would see it when I'm ready to see it. 
I don't dig for it. It's a shared, it's a communication with the Holy Spirit. And you just had to be about your prompts. And, and that's why purpose is so important in the dream. Because you're just about the Holy Spirit's purpose. And the purpose is just basically an intention to wake up at a rate that is gentle. And then gentle. the symbols will show up to reflect that intention. So, the, so you know, you wanted to go deeper. So you called forth the Teach Only Love Sanctuary. You called forth me and Carrie and I in awareness and David and Kirsten. So you called forth us as symbols of that intention. So now we're just like a, just like a, an aspect of your mind that's showing up, showing you what you believe, what you desire. Yeah. So it just gives you a context. So that purpose, those symbols, are a context for you to now reference from. Where before, you only had a reference of the world, the world's purpose, which was painful. And now you're going into a new one. But you're afraid because you don't know. And I'm carrying those old habits of, those I've got to force it, do it, make it happen. Like, I talk to people on the phone and I feel guilty because I'm not mind-watching or something. And yet, it's like this continual, no matter what I do, I feel guilty because... Right. So then it's nothing. the attraction to guilt. And it's just the ego breaking everything up into levels again. And making it seem real. So it's not that I shouldn't be talking on the phone. It's just... It's, it, the, you would only know, I, like I said to you before... Ask yourself, what is my what is my motive for this? What is the what is this for? Why am I doing this? Do I feel called to make this call right now, or am I calling because I'm bored? Am I calling because I'm afraid to be quiet? That is mind watching. So, so instead of going in and digging in your mind, do you see what I'm saying? It's already given to you. All you got to do is ask, what is it for? You do something. What is this for? You will feel it. You be very honest and, and honest with yourself. And just allow it to come up. What do I feel right now? Because right now, you feel. So it is given. You don't have to dig. It's obvious what I feel. You don't have to dig. I feel bored. There, there it is. Yeah. I feel bored. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of being quiet. I need to do something. I'm afraid of stillness. You see? That, yeah. that, and that can be helpful throughout the day. That's the one question you should always ask yourself in every single moment. It will direct you. That will direct you. Yeah, I'll have to watch each situation because I can't look back right now. Also have to watch. Yeah, it's okay. We don't have to look back. It's just, yeah. just do your lessons, and then throughout the day, you know, there's never a reason to feel guilty. That's just the ego. The ego's killed. You're a guiltless learner. So if you are on the phone, and even if you get off the phone, you go, "I'm doing this because I'm bored," or "I'm just alone, and I don't want to be alone with my thoughts right now." So I, you, so you see how all that's profitable. Yeah, all that's very profitable, but it's only profitable when you see it. When it's not seen, it's guilt. And if I come off with the thought, "Wow, I'm really grateful that I can share," then that's a joyful thought, not necessarily. Well, joy comes from the decision of the Holy Spirit, from seeing that everything works together for good, and it, it's being humble. Humbleness is the ingredient. And a guiltless learner. You're humble. Okay. I do believe I created a world. I didn't create it. It was made. What was made has nothing to do with reality. I didn't change it. Everything that I see is backwards and upside down. It's an error. I believe in a hierarchy of illusions in my mind. Therefore, I have to be in purpose to allow the Holy Spirit to loosen this hierarchy. And I think I am the author of reality and I, I'm addicted to the ego. I'm addicted to listening to the ego. I need to be convinced otherwise through prompts of the Spirit so I can learn to be convinced of the, by the miracle that reality or truth is the truth, that only the truth is true. I need to be convinced, you see? So listening to the prompts and looking at everything in a profitable sense from the atonement, 